I want to show you my studio space. This is the room that I use for all of my audio production, video production, music practice, and anything that I may need to do that involves a computer, microphones, cameras, lights, and what have you. So this room is kind of small. I don't know if you can tell that from this panning around, but it's about nine feet long by about eight feet wide. And it has a couple of odd fixtures, well, oddly placed fixtures, I suppose. This one is pretty normal. It's the door in the, um, the back corner. This is how you get in. And then there are uh, a door and a window in the opposite corner, but then there's a radiator right next to them. So there's um, kind of limited wall space on the, uh, the back walls. And there's only one power outlet in here, which makes for a troubling dilemma for somebody who has to set up a lot of electronic equipment. This room serves two primary purposes. One is music, the other is more of the tech side of music. On the tech side, the heart of this is my desk. This is a fully extended range Jarvis standing desk. It raises and lowers with the touch of a button that's here in the corner, the capacitive touch button. This one goes up higher than their normal Jarvis desk, and it also goes down lower than their normal Jarvis desk. This is great for me at the maximum height for doing work. I'm six foot four, so it uh, allows me to stand as tall as I would like without having to hunch over my computer. It helps with my posture, helps get me off of a chair during the day. This also goes extra low. I often set it at its lowest height for my virtual piano lessons. That way I can pull it over towards my piano. Uh, I've got my computer at an appropriate height for the camera and I've got my microphone already there ready to go. Speaking of the computer, this is an Apple M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro. It is uh, space gray, 500 gigabytes, the USB connections, I believe there are three of them, an HDMI out, an SD card, and MagSafe power adapter. This is an awesome computer with a really great camera, really great sound. It runs all of my audio software extremely well, uh, Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic, Reaper, as well as Final Cut Pro, Affinity Photo, Zoom, all of the programs that I need on a regular basis. So I'm very happy that I got this. I like that it's still a laptop. I can take it with me, but it performs like a, a beast of a desktop. I've got my audio interface behind that. This is the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. It's got eight analog inputs built into it, each of which has a XLR TRS connection that are interchangeable. So you can plug a microphone, a line level input, an instrument level input into each of these. Any of them can get phantom power. They all have gain knobs. They all have level monitors and two headphones, studio monitors on the back. These are the additional six inputs. I've got my Casio plugged into these two here, my Headrush pedal board plugged into these two here. These are my studio monitors. These are the additional six outputs. It's expandable to 18 ins, 20 outs with an ADAT connection. It's got a SPDIF connection as well. World's clock, good stuff. And the studio monitors that run out of it are the Atom T5V studio monitors. I've got a pair of them mounted on these Gator Frameworks stands. These clamp onto the desk. So wherever the desk goes, these studio monitors go. They raise and lower with the desk very smoothly. They're not too heavy and uh, don't wobble around too much. So I'm not really worried that they're gonna fall or anything. I've got my microphone here. This is an MXL 990 microphone. It's kind of a, a budget microphone, but it performs really well considering that. It's a large diaphragm condenser cardioid pattern. 
it's on this broadcasting boom arm. So this allows me to extend this out into the room towards my piano, and then I can put it away when I want to. Hold on. <laughs> Sometimes it moves the whole desk. Uh, and the reason that it might do that, this is kind of the secret of this whole setup, is that this desk is on casters. And um, I can roll this desk around in this room. It doesn't seem like it might be necessary in this space, but it was one of the things that I actually had as a, the biggest priority with my desk, uh, even above a standing desk, was getting something that rolled because I wanted it to be out of the way when I was not teaching piano lessons, but I wanted to be able to bring it over towards my piano. So I wanted to pull it so it was like right here and this desk on casters allows me to do that. So um, I, can, I can bring it close, uh, I can lower it down, and then um, I've got it here ready to set up within uh, about a minute. So <laughs> however long it takes me to get it down to the appropriate height. And um, then I could bring my microphone over here and uh, teach my Zoom piano lessons from this spot. So um, that's my desk setup, and I can then push this back. All of the cables for this rig are housed in this box underneath and tied to the desk with some cable ties. So I've got uh, these 3M clasps there. This is a, a box I got on Amazon. I forget the, the brand. Um, and uh, that's really cool. It clamps onto the desk as well. I've got any cables that need to run to the power outlet or to the piano and other gear over there. I've got them plugged in and wrapped up in this snake. And those can run um, from the side of the desk out here to uh, behind the radiator over to the power outlet. And that makes it great for moving this desk around, moving my whole setup around. Um, I have newer photography video lights, one on the desk, one over here clamped to the windowsill. So that's the, the setup for the, the desk. The next thing that I wanna show you are the musical instruments. I have quite a few. I play piano, guitar, trombone, bass guitar, and I sing. So uh, this is a fairly noisy room some days. On the wall back here, I have my guitars. I have uh, an electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and a bass guitar. The bass guitar is this one here. This is a Fender Precision Bass. It's a Precision Bass Special uh, Deluxe Series, and it's a four string, um, 21 frets or uh, whatever it is for, for the count there. And it is kind of a combination of the precision bass and jazz bass setup. So it's got pickups that would be found on both guitars. These are active pickups though. So we have a couple of extra controls here. Great sound. I've got it strung with flat strings, flat wound strings. So they are a little bit darker in tone than the round wound. All of my guitars are mounted on the wall with Hercules wall mounts. And these are fastened to the studs in the wall. They adjust to the weight and angle of the guitar head and uh, clamp down so uh, the guitar is a little more secure. Next to that one, I've got my Yamaha APX5A. This is a medium body acoustic guitar. I got this like in 2004 as a graduation present from my family. It's what I've used to write most of the guitar based songs that I've written over the years. And it's got a great tone. It's not like a high-end Taylor or Martin or anything, but it has a nice tone 
and it's uh, acoustic electric, nice uh, black finish, and um, good sound with that pickup that's in there. It's not uh, overly tinny as a lot of pickups tend to be. The next guitar that I have is my ESP E2 Eclipse. This is the 2018 model. Um, I think this is the only model they've released on the E2 line that has 24 frets. It's see-through black maple top with EMG active pickups and uh, a really gorgeous sounding guitar really aggressive sound when you crank the pickups up all the way. I am particularly a fan of the uh, neck pickup. It's got a very dark um, metal kind of tone. I upgraded from an SG faded, a Gibson SG faded to this guitar. I'm very happy that I made that choice. Yeah, it's an excellent, excellent instrument. Next to the guitars, I have a trombone. This is my old superstar trombone. It's a nickel plated trombone with an F attachment. This was probably made in the 60s. I really don't know. I got this off eBay for a really great price considering the condition. I love the tone of this. It's uh, of course not like a Bach Stradivarius or anything, but it's a great horn for my purposes. It's got an interesting setup here. The F attachment is a flat wound F attachment. They don't make these like this anymore. As you can see, this wraps around several times and there are several curves in it. The more curves in the pipe, the greater the timbral difference from the main tube of the horn. So um, modern trombones actually have the, the F attachment wrapping on the, on the outside. Um, in pretty much in parallel with the main tube so that they reduce the number of curves in it and increase the length of the straight parts of the tube. So that gives it less of a timbral difference when you switch to that F attachment. It's got a Vincent Bach 22D mouthpiece. I think this is a little bit brighter sound uh, but because this is a nickel plated horn, the horn itself has a darker tone. So they kind of balance each other out. I like the tone of the combination. I've got a fiberglass case here. This is a cross rock case. This is um, something I picked up on Amazon. It's kind of an imitation of a BAM case. Um, handle here, backpack straps here, and then you can also clip a shoulder strap to it got a handle up top for um, just kind of moving it around the room if you need to and um, pegs on the bottom for standing it upright. On the other side of the room I've got a couple other uh, pretty cool things. Down here on the floor going along with the guitars I've got my Headrush pedal board. This is a really great guitar processing pedal. It has stomp box and amp models as well as cabinet models and microphone modeling on it. Um, it's got a touchscreen interface which allows you to quickly set up guitar rigs, save them. You can have a bunch of uh, different setups saved in there so that you could use amps uh, of all different kinds, stomp boxes of all different kinds. It replaced all of my stomp box collection and my guitar amp and it gives me far more possibilities than I had with any of that gear before. It also is just this one thing with just a couple of cables to plug it in. So it's, it's really awesome. I've got this on casters so that I can move it around the room pretty easily. Um, the casters are part of a uh, furniture dolly that I got to set this on because I wanted this to be modular as well, like the desk. So um, if I have this here and I um, want to move it back to where it goes, um, I can put it back in its home. And that is uh, very convenient. 
So then the last instrument that I have is this uh, right here. This is my Casio GP510. This is the instrument that I've been using for a lot of my YouTube videos. It's a hybrid grand piano, has grand piano length keys with hammers on the end. They're plastic hammers that are made to mimic those that would be found in a grand piano. Main reason I got this was for that action that it has, uh, which is a little bit more like an authentic acoustic piano playing experience. And um, the sound as well is really fantastic on this instrument. It's got a six speaker output. It's got two up top, two that fire forward and two that fire down towards the floor. You can open the lid here. It's also got a cover for the keys, which is pretty novel for somebody who's played a slab keyboard for the last decade or so. Um, this has hammers that are visible in the, the lid here. You can see them back there. Um, and you can also see them on the other end. So, a really great music rests on it. I've got a um, mighty light there, orchestra light, and it's got, let's see, the three pedal system. Uh, these are the same pedal functions as would be found on a concert grand. So we've got the um, damper pedal, sostenuto, and unicorda on the side there. Um, and that was one of the other major reasons that I opted for this versus an upright piano, um, because an upright piano's pedal system is kind of an upright <laughs> specific thing. The unicorda or soft pedal functions differently than it does on a grand. It kind of throws the hammers a little bit closer to the strings. And the center pedal on most of the uprights that I played was a mute pedal so that you could, or a practice pedal so that you could practice quietly. I opted for a digital again because of the volume control that it offers. This is a small space once again, it's almost a, it's like a eight by nine foot rectangle. And um, that means that this room gets very loud. There's a very quick reverb and anything that I play in here gets pretty loud when the doors are closed. So I didn't want to have to struggle with the overwhelming volume of an acoustic piano and I didn't want to upset my neighbors. So I got this one. It replaced a lot of the additional cables and stuff that I had from my previous slab piano because I had to have speakers plugged into that. It allowed me to kind of consolidate all of my tech stuff over here on this desk. And um, yeah, it really allowed me to have more space in this room, even though this is a larger instrument than um, the slab piano that I had before. Okay, so that's my space. And once again, it's a small space, but you can do a lot with a small space if you get some things to be more modular. I highly recommend things like casters, uh, cable management, wall mounted stuff, and anything that combines a lot of tech stuff into one smaller space is really great. So this is my space. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like, click subscribe, and I will see you next time.